Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The IPP office has provided some insights into how it will tackle the doubling of the next renewables round to 5,200 megawatts. Terence Kuma joins me to pass on some of that insight. Hi Terence. Hi Shanel. Before talking about the next round, what has become of Bitwindow 5? Yes, that uh, has been delayed massively. So we know that there was a number of projects procured, 25 uh, last year. Uh, they, they were named as preferred bidders, not procured. And then there has been a process since then to try and reach commercial and financial close. None of those projects have reached uh, financial close, which means that there's no construction activity, which means that the whole round for 2,600 megawatts or so of wind and solar means it's going to be much more delayed than what, was, what is allocated for in the integrated resource plan. And there's concern that some, many of these projects might be casualties and there's a few things that changed since the bid submission uh, was made. Key changes have been in the, uh, the supply chain, so it's very difficult to get your solar and wind components. The cost of those components has, has risen massively. The cost of services uh, to these projects, uh, EPC services, construction services, has risen. So, and these projects were bid at very, very aggressive, uh, seemingly, prices. So they materially lower than what we've seen before, below the 50 cents per kilowatt hour range. And there's a feeling that a lot of these projects are now underwater and aren't viable. The IPP office is still working uh, to try and close these projects. They say that the big delaying factor has actually been around receiving budget quotes from Eskom for grid connectivity, and that some of these budget quotes have been significantly different from what the, the cost estimate letters. So People are having to rework uh, their projects, their, the, the grid connection part of that, even to get new environmental authorizations, and that has been majorly delayed. So the final budget quote should be by the end of this month, which is quite stunning. You would have thought that all these budget quotes would have been received many, many months ago, but uh, all the projects then should have it. There are three very mature or, or sort of closure-ready projects, the IPP office says, out of the five that had their full budget quotes in time to have engagements with the RPPs, two are struggling and they, will, they believe that once all the budget quotes are in, then they'll have better visibility. In terms of the request for proposals, the only changes that can be uh, you know, made in the, your price bid relate to exchange rates and interest rates. And it, uh, so you, you can't have the fundamental stuff, the, the actual procurement costs of the components are featuring. So there's limited room to manoeuvre and it's going to be, there's a lot of interest to see how many of these well-priced projects eventually close. What is the background to the doubling of Bitwindow 6? So we know that we've had intense load shedding this year, the worst year ever for load shedding. The President had an announcement on the 25th of July which had a number of components to it, one of which was to double up the size of bid window 6. So we've just been speaking about bid window 5. Bid window 6 was supposed to happen in August for another 2,600 megawatts, 1,600 megawatts of wind and 1,000 megawatts of solar. And the president said, no, we're going to double up and go for 5,200 megawatts during that round. That's massive. We've only procured just over 6,000 megawatts since 2011, but we did have that seven-year disruption when Eskin refused to sign power purchase agreements with IPPs. So we have had a disrupted period and we are just restarting. And you can see the teething problems that we've had with, with bid window five. One of the issues I didn't mention was the issue around local content where there has been give, give since president's announcement for the bid window five projects. And that has also been somewhat reduced for the bid window six, but it's gonna be, it's still, they're still stiff targets, especially for the solar projects. So that's really the background, that uh, we need more energy in the system. We know that we're about 6,000 megawatts short. That much makes us vulnerable to load shedding. And there's a view that we need to scale up and accelerate our procurement and, uh, and really get more megawatts into the system as, pos as soon as possible. What accommodations have been made and what is the time frame? Well, the one accommodation I mentioned is around uh, the local contents being reduced to 50% for those panels. I think that's still going to be a difficult ask and uh, the 
Minister of Trade, Industry and Competition has indicated that he's keeping a, a close eye on this and won't allow this to get in the way of, of new megawatts coming into the system. But it, it's still there. The, the, it's, uh, for bid window five, it was reduced to 35%. So there's, there's that accommodation. There's the delay in the, uh, in the actual dates. So you have to now register your project latest by the 15th of September. It would have been far earlier than that when we had 11th of August closing date. That was the original date. And we've pushed back the actual bid submission date to the 22nd of September. Uh, to accommodate this larger expect expected you know, flow of, of, of projects. Two things that are required is NERSA uh, needs to give it uh, its concurrence to a ministerial determination that allows for more procurement, in particular of solar PV. So the current determination from about 2020 allows for a certain amount of solar PV which has been exhausted up until the end, almost exhausted up until the end of um, bid window 5 and there was still a thousand megawatts left for bid window six. If that doesn't come through, then the round has to be uh, reduced by a thousand megawatts probably. So uh, this determination is now out for public comment or the nurse's concurrence of, of, of that determination. <laughs> and the deadline for comment is the 22nd of September, which is the day after the bid submission date. So it's unclear now whether the full 5,200 megawatts can feasibly pre be procured under bid window 6 and whether 1,000 megawatts of solar has to be lopped off, taking it to, to 4,200. So and as we speak, we don't know the answer to that, but there's a definite timing mismatch. So while there's been some accommodation uh, made on the deadlines and the timeframes, uh, just in terms of the solar PV side and the mismatch between the NERSA process and the IPP office process means that the round might not be a full 5,200 megawatts at this stage, but we'll have to see if there's maybe a further delay to accommodate uh, the NERSA process or, or not. What are the possible risks? Well, the risks of having such a big round in a high-priced environment, in an inflationary environment, is that we get much higher priced projects and that will be in the system for the next 20 years. We've had this you know, the virtuous circle since tw 2011 of continually lowering uh, the costs of solar and wind that have come through this bidding, bidding uh, reverse auctions. And it's been a, you know, it started off very, very high and we st th th that stick gets used very often to hit the renewables industry with the initial bid windows starting off with very, very high prices. But they really have come down and unfortunately bid window five is in this uh, difficult stale, stalemate period at the moment uh, to really very, very competitive prices which are dramatically lower than what you could do for any other technology, new coal, new gas, etc. So the risk is that we, we already know that prices will have to be higher than what we saw in bid window 5, but when you have such a big allocation, whether the prices will be materially higher and whether there's going to be enough competitive pressure uh, will there be enough bidders? Uh, indications are that there is still a lot of interest through the, the request for cost estimate letters from Eskom's grid access unit. There seems to have been a, a large flow. But that brings us to the second risk, and that's the grid constraints. The grid constraints are such now that you have to be spatial in the way you bid. You can no longer really look at Northern Cape and many of the Cape provinces as real options, which is a real pity because that's the best acreage we have for wind and solar in the country but there's just no way to evacuate that capacity so people would have, will have to come with projects that are aligned to where the grid capacity is which is in the northeast of the country there's a lot in Mpumalanga and the good thing there is that's also where a lot of the just energy transition activity has to take place so that's, that's, that's a, a, a good making virtue out of necessity uh, where we can employ more people around the renewables value chain and construction of renewable plants. But that, so the, the prices, the grid, are key risks uh, around this round. And again, because you're going to go to areas of lower renewables resources, we must also expect the prices to go up. So it's, it's not an easy period to be entering into a large procurement program. And this is very large. We must understand, as I said, this is... If we, buy, if we try and buy 5,200 megawatts of wind and soda, 
it's almost doubling our renewable industry in one round. Not quite, but it's, it's very significant. If it all works out, it will be great, but I think there are a number of risks. We also know there's the, well, the whole energy market risk, but exchange rate risk is a big thing, and we've seen the RAND fluctuate massively this year. So, um, and then the other thing is, does government have the capacity to do bill evaluation in the time frame we're talking about? We're talking about urgency, especially if we're not going to get all the, the bid window fire projects into the system. We need to see real urgency. And the message out there is that the transaction advisors who actually do the evaluation, it's not government itself, there seems to be a view that there is capacity there. But you can see this is not, a, this is not an easy, uh, no easy pickings, nothing's easy at the moment in the energy system globally, and in particular in South Africa, but we really require urgency and action. So there, we need those risks to be managed and mitigated. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching. And join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.